friends. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. I recently finished reading the autobiography of Malcolm X and almost immediately decided I wanted to draw him. Of course, as soon as I had the thought, I began self-editing and thinking about how I don't draw in a realistic style and the last time I tried to draw a semi-realistic portrait of someone, it came out all janky and I essentially vowed never to do that to myself again. But I'm working on not shooting down my own ideas before I even try them. So before I could sink into the depths of insecurity, I put pen to pencil and drew a little something. It's always nerve wracking drawing a portrait because everyone knows what humans are generally supposed to look like. And we can all tell when a portrait is a little off. We might not be able to tell exactly what is off about it, but we know something is. And then it's one thing to draw some random reference you find on Pinterest that nobody needs to know about. But when you set out to draw a well-known figure, you're really putting yourself on the wire. But new me is embracing trying and failing over never trying and imagining perfection. I know that I'm not drawing how I hope to draw one day, but I'm also doing a lot better than I thought I would. So there's always that. But back to Malcolm X. I loved his autobiography. Alex Haley made me feel like I was in the room with Malcolm X listening to him tell his life story. I went in expecting to find a man very different from the villain he's painted to be, but I was surprised to also find a man different from who his supporters say he is as well. Obviously, Malcolm X was very pro-black and all about embracing our blackness and not assimilating to European standards of beauty. What I didn't know is that he speaks from experience. He spent all of his early life before going to jail and joining the Nation of Islam working on assimilation. He wore a conch hairstyle, which I decipher to essentially be a form of relaxer and went through a stage of not knowing his worth as a black man. So when he discovered that worth, he made it his ardent mission for every black man to know it too. Malcolm X was accused of being anti-white for most of his life and maybe he was, <laughs> but his hate was not created in a bubble or out of nothing. While he was surrounded by people who hated him and people who looked like him for something as inconsequential as skin tone and a warped idea of supremacy, Malcolm's hatred was birthed in violence. He lost his father and all of his uncles to white violence and nobody said or did anything about it. Well, no white people did. And the black people were too scared to. Instead, the government institutions decided to help in the way they decided his family needed help and not in the way his family was asking for help, by taking Malcolm away from his family and not providing the financial aid and medical care his mother needed in order to keep her family together following her husband's murder, of which she never received the life insurance for because they claimed it was suicide, although there was no possible way at all it could have been suicide. It was clearly murder. It was clearly a lynching. Anyway, <laughs> the popular, often quoted Nation of Islam and Muslim Malcolm X is Believe it or not, a karma version of the Malcolm birth in violence. One of my biggest takeaways and the thing I most admire about Malcolm X is that he was willing and able to change his mind when shown evidence to the contrary of what he believed to be true. It's a trait lacking in many of our leaders today and a part of his life that isn't spoken of much. I think many of us are scared that if we change our minds on certain ideas, we'll come across as wishy-washy or we'll be rejected from our tribes. 
But as Maya Angelou said, do the best you can until you know better. Then when you know better, do better. It's okay to change your mind as long as you're changing it for the better. And it's also okay to stand up for something without fully knowing or understanding it yet. It's okay to make mistakes. Just do the best you can and keep evolving. Keep learning and growing and evolving. On his pilgrimage to Mecca, or his Hajj, he encountered white people who treated him not only like a human being, but like a brother. This enabled him to offer more grace and kindness to those well-meaning white people in America and elsewhere who wanted to join in the fight against racism with him. And after leaving the Nation of Islam, he was able to commune more with other civil rights leaders of the time, including Christian ministers such as Dr. Martin Luther King, of whom he'd said some harsh words previously. While he still didn't always agree with their approach, or everything they did, or even their philosophy, he was able to offer them more grace and understanding, and see that in the big picture, they were all essentially working towards the same thing. I also felt like part of his story are an indictment against us Christians for not living the life that Christ has called us to lead and not caring for the least of these. I love that Malcolm was able to find brotherhood among Muslims of all races. I'm also deeply grieved that he never felt that in this so-called Christian nation or among Christians in general. His proof that even the hardest of hearts can be changed by love and respect and God. And we as Christians need to be better in offering that love, especially towards those who most offend us. I've heard women say that before getting seriously involved in a romantic relationship with someone, you should talk to a few of their exes and see what they have to say about that person, or you should pay attention to how that person speaks about their exes, because everyone's kind when they're receiving kindness, but when things get tough, that's when the ugly comes out. I think a similar idea can be levied against Christians, and I include myself wholeheartedly in this. We should listen to what people who aren't Christians have to say about us collectively and also what they have to say about us personally. I'm not saying that they'll agree with us, they likely won't, but I think that even if they come away thinking we have bigoted or outlandish ideas, they should be able to say our behaviour demonstrates the love and respect we have for everyone and that we truly treat everyone as the God-bearing images they are. Malcolm was a highly intelligent man who, under different circumstances, may have been able to follow his dream of becoming a lawyer. Actually, scrap that. Who, under different circumstances, would have definitely been able to follow his dreams of becoming a lawyer and would have definitely been one of the top lawyers in this country. He may have even risen to Supreme Court status or higher, but he was robbed of education and a peaceful life because of racism. <laughs> I wonder how different things might be if his presence was still in this world, calling people out fearlessly for their hypocrisy and racism.
Anyway, <laughs> back to the sketch. This sketch is by no means a masterpiece. It's not anything that would ever go in a portfolio, but it's a piece. I drew it. I silenced the internal criticism and forced myself to draw this and I'm grateful that I did because it gives me more confidence to do more portrait sketching in the future and hopefully watch myself improve over time. Don't wait for perfection, just do the damn thing. And that's a surprising tongue twister. <laughs> As always, thank you so much for watching. Good day, good evening, or good night. Goodbye.